Hi gang, you've probably heard of voltage, current, and power, volts, amps, and watts. Well in this video I'll explain what the current and amps are. Let's start with this small circuit. Inside the wire are atoms with protons and neutrons in the center, and electrons surrounding that. The protons don't move, but some of the electrons are free to move between the atoms. The protons are positively charged, and the electrons are negatively charged. But what is charge? Charge is a property of these particles that affects how they behave when they interact with each other. Unlike charges attract each other. For example, after all this rubbing, my hair has more positively charged protons than electrons, and is attracted to this balloon that has extra negatively charged electrons. And like charges repel each other. These two balloons both have extra negatively charged electrons, where they were rubbed, so they repel. So we have negatively charged electrons moving down the wire, and positively charged protons just sitting there. Finally, we can say what current is. Current is the flow of charge. In this case, the flow of charge along a wire. The amount of negative charge that passes here every second is the amount of current. Charge is measured in a unit called the Coulomb. To get just one Coulomb of charge, it takes 6.241 times 10 to the 28 electrons, or 6,241 followed by 25 zeros number of electrons. So one Coulomb of charge is a heck of a lot of electrons. But when doing electronics, we don't usually use the unit's coulombs per second. Instead, we usually use the simpler unit, the amp. The symbol for the amp is A. For example, we could say that there are 5 amps running through this wire, or maybe 50 milliamps. We can measure just what the current is using this multimeter. To do that, we have to break the circuit and insert the meter. We set the meter to an appropriate scale and see that the current is around 370 microamps. This flow of the negative charge of electrons down a wire is one way to think of current, and in fact we refer to that as electron flow. But often, instead we talk about the positive charge moving down a wire. This is called conventional current. But wait! I said that the positively charged protons don't move in the wire. And they don't. But back in the 1700s, no one knew about the existence of electrons or protons. At the time, Benjamin Franklin did a lot of experimenting using charge from a Leyden jar, or capacitor. He theorized about an electric fluid, and chose that an excess of electric fluid would be positive, and the lacking of electric fluid would be negative. To Franklin, it followed that the fluid would move from the positive area with excess fluid to the negative area that lacked fluid. It wasn't until 150 years later that the electron was discovered. We now know that for the experiments he was doing, it was the negative electrons that were his excess fluid, and the areas left lacking were left with excess positive protons. It was the negative electrons that flowed from the area with excess to the area lacking. But over those 150 years, the flow of positive charge in a wire became the convention, and engineers still use it today. The formulas still work, so in a sense it doesn't matter. It just causes a little confusion for many when you see a symbol like a diode like this that has an arrow pointing this way, and yet the electrons move this way. There are other ways to produce current too, such as by moving ions around. A neutral atom is one that has an equal number of positive protons and negative electrons. But if you add an extra electron, then the atom has more negative charge than positive charge. It's negatively charged. Or if you remove an electron, then it has more positive charge than negative charge. It's positively charged. We call those charged atoms ions. An example of something that uses ions is a lead-acid car battery. They contain lead plates alternating with lead oxide plates. Between them is sulfuric acid. While they're charged and being used, positively charged hydrogen atoms, the ions, move from the negative plates to the positive plates. In this case it really is the positive charge that's moving inside the battery, acting as the current. Other examples of current are a corona between two electrodes, or a spark, or an arc. Air is not normally conductive, but if you apply a high enough voltage between two electrodes, as with this lifter, you can cause free electrons and ions to move between the electrodes. That makes the air conductive. It usually appears as a bluish or purplish glow, and is called a corona. And of course moving charge is a current. So as with the battery, we have current with no metal wires. Depending on the circuit, once the air is conductive enough, a sudden and brief rush of charge may cross. That's called a spark. Sparks like that can consist of a lot of moving charge. This is what happened when I was creating strong sparks, playing with ion propulsion and a Star Trek Enterprise model. The current from sparking was strong enough to break a transistor in my power supply. Or if there's a continuous supply of more charge, then the rush may keep going. That's called an arc. 
So this is a continuous movement of charge through the air, a continuous current. And that's what current and apps are. Well, thanks for watching. See my YouTube channel, RIMSTAR.ORG, for more interesting videos like this. That includes one about a dissectable capacitor, something that Benjamin Franklin had experimented with. Another about how to make the lifter I showed when talking about Corona. And one showing the Star Trek Enterprise model I talked about, this time being propelled using ion wind. And don't forget to subscribe if you like these videos, or give a thumbs up, or leave a question or comment below. See you soon!